Thank you for the visit. PsyQ is science made simple for the rest of us. Enjoy. In just stepping back and pondering the miracle of life, it feels like the earth itself is alive. Sometimes, if you listen very closely, it is almost as if you can hear her heart beating. The way that people build roadways is similar to the cardiovascular system of the human body. Countless veins and arteries large and small, leading in all directions. The way humans course up and down our roadways and waterways is very similar to the way blood flows through veins and arteries. If people are the lifeblood of the planet, then we are also the health, mood, and mental state of the planet. Global mood, health, and disposition of our people seem to dictate the mood, health, and disposition of the planet itself. Looking at it from that perspective, it feels like planet Earth is a depressed, mentally ill entity on the verge of cardiac arrest. It is shocking to look at our wonderful world and to feel as if we are letting her down. She has never given us anything except her very best. We reward her as if she is of little significance. How can a body be healthy unless the blood is healthy also? If the individual cells in the bloodstream have their own agenda and constantly are at odds with each other, that is cancer of the blood. Humanity is capable of much more than lowering itself to being a cancer or a blight. Words are cheap and plentiful. It is only when we take good words into our hearts and into our daily lives that they make a difference. It is only when we truly practice what we preach that our diseased planet begins to heal. All people were created equal, love thy neighbor as thyself, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, think of your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. Those are all good words and great concepts, yet they may as well have never been written or spoken unless we take words such as these into our hearts and make them a meaningful part of our everyday lives. It is not when we say wonderful words, but when we do wonderful deeds, that our great mother begins to heal. What atrocity has she committed against us that we wish to drive her insane and drive her to a stroke or a heart attack? Many of us remember in the 1987 movie Wall Street, where Michael Douglas, as Gordon Jico, gave a speech where he said, greed, for lack of a better word, is good. He went on to sugarcoat that concept by speaking very eloquently about the subject, yet that sort of ideology is pure poison. It poisons the blood and sickens the people, therefore, it sickens the planet. Compassion, sympathy, empathy, and charity are all good. Good for the sake of greed itself has never been good. It is not good now, and it never will be good. We have saber-rattling idiots in charge of entire countries and entire populations. Listen to these words as an example. Donald Trump stated recently that he would unleash fire and fury on another nation, the likes that the world has never seen. The response from that other nation was, should the US pounce upon the DPRK with military force at last, the DPRK is ready to teach the US a severe lesson with its strategic nuclear force. Does this remind anyone of two juvenile delinquents measuring to see who has the longest penis or counting to see who has the most marbles? When the blood is ill, the brain is ill, and the heart is ill. When we look at all of the governments of all of the countries in all of the world, we find one absolute common denominator. They are products of the resolve of the people. Government is a direct reflection of our hearts and our spirits. We make the beds that we lie upon. We are all products of the circumstances that we create. If the population of the planet begins to heal, the governments will begin to heal as well. What I am saying is, when governments fully understand what their people will tolerate and what they will not tolerate, then they begin to behave accordingly. Here's a for instance, and I am using the USA as an example. The absolute only reason black kids are being killed in the streets by the police is because we as Americans support the murder of our citizens by the police. If we don't accept it, the murder will stop. If you have racism in your community, it is because at the core of your community, you support racism. If you have sexism in your community, it is because at the core of your community, you support sexism. 
If your local government is corrupt, it is because at the core of your community, you support corruption. When citizens are running for office, be bold, ask them the hard questions, like, do you support racism, sexism, homophobia, murder by cop, etc. You must not be served by people who support things you hate. If you are served by people who support the things you love most in your heart, then problems get solved and the blood of your community begins to heal. As a result, the community itself begins to heal. This ideology must start on the local level and it must be taken to the highest levels of government expeditiously. So goes the heartbeat of the community, so goes the community itself. So goes the heartbeat of the nation, so goes the nation itself. So goes the heartbeat of the world, so goes the world itself. Many people of the planet Earth found themselves frozen by truth and reality. When we heard the late, great Carl Sagan say, From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species, lived there, on the mode of dust, suspended in a sunbeam. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. As long as the human spirit survives, all the great voices and ideas from the past will survive within us also. We are living in a rare moment in time. Three billion people connected on the internet. More billions will be connected in a short period of time. 
as a species, isn't it about time to stand up to the powers that be in a peaceful manner and say, enough is enough? Isn't it about time to wave an olive branch over this world and demand our time to heal? Every word Carl Sagan said was wondrous and powerful, yet not a single one will bear fruit unless we let them bear fruit by living them in our hearts continuously, minute to minute, each and every day of our lives. The real healing begins person to person, then community to community, country to country, and then the world over. It seems that we should never go to sleep at night without giving thanks for our existence while letting the feeling of that thanks truly sink into our spirits. We should absorb thanks for our creation right into the quick of our existence. Moving forward, we must do away with all the guilt and self-loathing we carry in our lives. If we look for atrocities to feel guilty about, I guess we can look all the way back to the days of the Neanderthal people and bear a cross of guilt for out-competing them or otherwise beating them into extinction. All of the guilt and self-loathing we can heap on ourselves will not change one single second of time from the past. The important thing is not where we have been, but rather the path that leads us forward. When you click away from this video, I hope that you can take a good feeling along with you, and I hope you will make an opportunity so that our great Mother Earth can be proud of her progeny, and so she can relax and breathe in good health for the first time in a great long while. Please like, subscribe, share and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more releases from PsyQ.